What up YouTube, this is Jay from Encounter Wargaming and today we're going to be building some jungle trees. Alright guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to build these awesome jungle pieces for our jungle table that we're building. Uh, you guys saw the video last week of the table itself being built. Now these ones are just going to be kind of filler terrain. Uh, a little bigger than throw terrain, basically just some line of sight block and we're going to make the table look like a jungle. So all the terrain pieces like the bunkers and the sandbags and all that stuff, we're going to be adding trees to those too. But I wanted to show you guys the actual trees first because obviously those are going to be included in those tutorials and I don't want to repeat myself. So today we're going to be building these things just to fill out the table and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that step by step. So basically the first step we got to do is go collect some sticks. So to find some sticks, or just come here to your neighborhood park. Although it helps if you have the best stick finder in the business. Good girl. Fill our glasses up with wine. That'll do for today. But there's so much more to taste. You drank yours, now you'll drink. I got myself a big bag, uh, like a shopping bag full of sticks, but much like the other tutorials in this uh, series, I am just going to do this one piece of terrain for you. So I've got my sticks here, they just pulled a few out of my bag there, and uh, I've actually let them dry out for about a week. Now there are tricks you can do, because again I got these from the park, right? Uh, and it rains and groundwater and what have you so I just wanted to make sure that they were totally dry so that in the future they don't rot away underneath my paint job because that would just suck so I've actually just let these dry uh, out in the open for like a week what you can do actually is you can put them in the oven at a very uh, low temperature but uh, I don't like doing that because you risk like singeing the edges and possibly starting a fire in your oven which is just a bad idea so if you've got time collect your sticks and then just put them aside for like a week, two weeks, uh, let all the air get to them, let the water get out of them. Uh, so as you can see, I've got some sticks here, just random sticks, and because they're so dry, I can just crack them super easy, and that's exactly what I want to do, because I don't want these trees to be like ridiculously high. They do, I do want them to be higher than say a tank or a dreadnought or what have you. Uh, but I don't want them to be like super high trees. So like this stick for example is way too long I'm just gonna crack it in half and wherever it naturally breaks is fine because the more natural the break the better it is um, For this purpose that is and don't worry about the branches and stuff here because we are gonna be adding branches with these little sticks So again, I want to break these little guys into like a bunch of little branches now that they're super dry, it is incredibly easy to do. They're giving me almost no resistance when breaking them. Which is excellent, because that's exactly what I want. So, to start, I'm going to take my big ones. Uh, and I do want kind of a flat end on either side. This side, I suppose, is going to be my best bet. Uh, again, I want to be adding branches later, and don't worry. If some of this bark flakes off, if some of it stays on, that's okay. I just noticed a couple of these are flaking off, but no worries there. Um, I do want to glue branches on later and we'll go into that in the next step, but for right now uh, this one's permanently attached, but what we're also going to do is we want to create roots for these pieces later on down the road. So right now I can either use this guy as a branch or I can use him as a root, and since the more flat side I think is actually the side that this branch is on, I might want to actually use it as a root rather than a branch. So I've got my hot glue gun here had it heating up since before I started the camera so it should be good and hot now and wherever this piece is going to connect to the foam board is where I want to put the glue so in this case it's going to be a big glob and don't be afraid to get a gigantic glob on there guys Damn. so as you can see there I actually don't have a massive contact point so what I can do while I'm holding it is take my hot glue and build up around here I'm just kind of like globbing it on to the sides. Again, I'm going lower than this uh, natural branch that was on here that's going to be a root because I want the roots to sort of be semi-buried by the time I'm done, uh, which is going to be achieved with spackle and sand. But for now, I just want to kind of build up with 
hot glue because when hot glue dries it's very similar to like a plastic and that will provide a lot of sturdiness for this guy. We'll just let that harden for a bit and we're going to keep going on this uh, template. Template, template. And just start gluing a few more on because obviously I don't want just one tree. I think this one is going to need at least three or four. I've got both trees going at opposite angles. This creates sort of a natural appearance because obviously all trees don't grow the same direction. They don't all grow the same height. And especially in a jungle environment, um, you're going to get a lot of randomness. Okay, our hot glue is hardened. And as you can see here, I've only put three on this template. I've got room for probably more, but remember, we're going to want to place miniatures on here, and I am going to be putting some ground foliage, so we don't want to completely make this uh, thing useless, but we do want it populated enough that it's going to be a line of sight blocker. So, strangely, the rule of thumb when it comes to trees is to place them in threes. I'm not entirely sure why, but that's the best way to get the natural look. Apparently the natural world likes to do things in threes, so this is how we're going to do it. I've got three of them in a sort of shallow triangle shape, and of course I've left pretty much this whole side here so to sort of be able to place miniatures. So the next step is going to be sort of simulating like tree roots. So luckily we had one that was kind of naturally already attached, which sort of gave us a nice start, but we want all of these guys to have at least a couple of roots, just to add a little bit of personality to the piece uh, and make it look a little more realistic. So when I broke up all these sticks, uh, there was a couple of instances where I was left with like a little tiny short piece like this. Now this is not really gonna be any good to use as a branch for our trees, but it's gonna be perfect to use as a tree root. So this guy who already, this guy here who already had the, pe uh, the root already on it, he's got a very skinny side over here. So not only is this going to create um, a good appearance for these things, but it's also going to provide more strength to these pieces. So all I'm going to do, I'm still working with the hot glue. I'm going to put a big glob on one side and a big glob on the other side. And I'm going to take it and put it, oh, sorry, I'm blocking again. Put it on an angle like that. Butt it up against the stick, the tree trunk and put it like that. You guys can see that. Zoom in a little bit for you. There you go. And basically just put it on an angle like that. And that'll strengthen this, even though it's already pretty strong. And just like I did on the tree trunk, I actually, I'm actually gonna want to put a nice glob of hot glue all the way around this. So it kind of holds it in. And then I even want to build up a bit inside here because this is obviously not going to be exposed on the final product. And the more hot glue I build up in here, the stronger it's going to be in the long run of the game. So there's the one tree. Got some roots down there, looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other two, and then we'll go on to branches. Sweet, so these are all dry now. The glue's all hardened, that's great. As you can see, they're pretty damn sturdy. I can pick it up, wave it around from these branches and it's not coming off, so that's a good sign. And in fact, the more layers we put on this, we're gonna put layers of spackle, we're gonna put layers of glue, we're gonna put layers of sand, it's gonna get even stronger. So these should be perfectly acceptable. The next step uh, is the branches. So we've got, again, all my little tiny sticks that I've broken up into pieces. Uh, I'm just gonna take ones that I think are not too long, but also not too short. Uh, like this guy, for example, is probably the perfect length for a branch. And then I'm just going to arbitrarily like go around and find spots that I think they should be. So why don't we put it on the tall guy here. Yeah. So I've got here my little pin drill. Standard pin drill that you would use for your, your miniatures. Uh, this is the Citadel one. Uh, I assume they still sell this. I'm not entirely sure. I bought this probably about 15 years ago and it's done me great. So I'm just going to go down the middle of the stick that I want to use as the bridge and just randomly drill a hole there as close to center as possible, so you guys can see that. And then over here, I think I want it to be there-ish. So, find that point, take my pin drill, drill a nice hole in the side of this tree. So I don't have to go too deep. There we go, just one maybe about three or four millimeters in. 
And then just to make life easy, I have paper clips. This is generally what you use to pin models. If you've never pinned models before, I'm going to be showing you this for the first time. We're uh, just going to take our normal hobby clippers, trim off a little bit of the paper clip. Now again, I didn't go too deep, so I don't need that big of a piece. But we do want them long enough that they're going to be strong enough to hold these branches on. So there you go. Now what I want to do is I actually, before I, want, before I glue it, I want to kind of dry fit it and make sure my pin is not longer than my hole is deep. And as you can see right there, it was far too deep and the whole pin just sunk right in. So I'm going to go with a longer one. So I've got a nice long one now. Put it into this branch and make sure it's still sticking out. So there you go. Still sticking out a little bit there. I want to put it into my trunk, and as you can see right there, it is actually too long. So there we go. But I can see the difference, the amount that it's sticking out still. That's the amount I'm going to cut off. Maybe just a tiny bit more than that amount. Bam. One more dry fit, just to make sure. And perfect. So what I'm going to do now is I actually want to take my crazy glue. I prefer crazy glue for this kind of stuff. You can use white glue, wood glue, um, you can use hot glue. But the thing is the hot glue is going to peel off a little bit later. It's different when putting hot glue onto a crystal board. It's like sort of adheres very well. Whereas wood on wood like this, the hot glue is not going to adhere very well. Wood glue of course is going to be the best, but it takes forever to dry. Whereas the crazy glue will be pretty much instant. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna just pour it down this hole that I made. Put a nice dollop all the way around the branch. Shove my paper clip in, like so. And then throw a little bit of crazy glue into the hole in the trunk. Put her in and just hold it in place for like 20 seconds, 30 seconds. It takes about 20 or 30 seconds to dry, but again, if I used wood glue, it would take like 15 to 45 minutes, and even 24 hours to harden properly. And there is no freaking way I'm holding this thing for 45 minutes, or 24 hours for that matter. With the shape of this uh, situation, it would be very hard to clamp it for 24 hours. So I like the crazy glue, because there you go. There it is, guys. As you can see, I only added a couple here and there. Um, we don't need that many. If you're, uh, in this case, I'm doing large jungle leaves, so I really don't need that many branches. I just don't want them all coming out of the center, right? I want like one over here, one over there. So I've just added a couple of these, and because of the pins, they are pretty damn strong. So hopefully they won't break in the future. I mean, obviously, you know, if somebody puts their elbow down on the piece, it's gonna break. But just from normal usage, it shouldn't. So the next step, we want to start making this look like an actual piece of terrain. So I've got my DAP. So this stuff is made by DAP. It's dry decks. I usually use uh, polyfilla, but I picked up this stuff because it was on a good price. And the cool thing I found about this stuff is that it's pink, which means it'll dry white, and that will let me know when it's dry, when I can put it my glue and sand on top and what have you. So we're gonna go on pink, it's gonna dry white, and it's gonna look awesome when it's done. Right now, I'm just gonna get some on my finger, and I'm just gonna go around and kind of taper out this area, these areas here. here. I'll try and get that more in view for you. Where the roots are and stuff, and where the white glue is, and just taper it down into the foam core. So the point here is to cover the hot glue as well, still leaving our roots exposed like that. You guys can see that there. Still left the root exposed. And I just want to kind of create a nice transition down into the template of the piece so that we don't have these like massive globs, obviously. If I put sand directly on top of that, it'll look really weird. Plus, this will add another layer of strength to it and just make it look damn pretty by the time I'm done. So I'm gonna go around keep going. I mean, that's basically the technique, guys. Just get nice and dirty, get your fingers right in there. Make sure that you're working out from the or working out from the tree trunk. 
if you need to pu push a little bit in in order to get it underneath the, the roots like I'm doing right here, that's okay. But you don't want to get too much onto the tree itself or else it'll just look really weird. Uh, you want to kind of work out from the tree. And then if you really want to add some more personality to this piece, you can even go around the areas where there isn't trees and just put like a massive dab and just like I say taper it back out into the piece and that'll create sort of a, a little mound or hill there. In fact, the more of this you put all around the piece, the less likely this foam board is to warp when we put our PVA glue down. So if I completely cover this guy in dap, then by the time I go to put my PVA glue, there'll be less chance of warping. And you guys will see that in a second. Cool, so we've actually got one more step before we start putting sand on the base of this guy. Uh, I want to make sure, because as you can see here, a lot of these sticks still have some bark on them. Uh, the smart thing to do would actually be to peel off all the bark as far as making sure that there's no moisture trapped underneath or any of that kind of stuff. But like I said, I left these out for quite a while to dry, well over a week. I think that's more than enough. And in fact, I want to preserve some of this bark because I want these trees to actually look like trees when they're done, not just like naked sticks. Plus. Now that I've got these branches on here, they are pinned, they are super glued, and as you can see, there's almost no movement, so they are on really well, but the next step we're gonna do is gonna make sure that none of this bark flakes off in the future. It's gonna make sure that when we actually get around to painting these sticks, that the paint is not gonna soak in as much. As well, it's going to make these branches a lot stronger, and the way we're gonna do that is just with some very simple PVA glue. So here I got my dollar store PVA glue, got my palette. As I've said before, I like to use tin foil because it's great, you can just throw it out afterwards. And then I'm going to take one of my uh, crappy dollar store brushes that I buy ma mass quantities of um, for terrain projects like this where I'm using glue and spackle and all kinds of things I don't want to get on my good brushes. And I'm just going to literally paint these sticks with glue. Now, it probably is going to take me a couple of coats because you're going to find that the first coat especially is going to soak in a lot um, especially because these sticks are really dried out but I want to get not like a super thick layer I mean we're going to take Duncan's advice there and we're going to put on two thin coats alright guys two thin coats onto these at least you can put more if you want if you find that the second coat actually soaks in a lot too you can always put more coats on and like I say, this is mainly to protect these, but it also serves to stop any of this bark from flaking off in the future. And I wanna make sure I put a lot of it where the bark actually meets the stick, like right there, where the bark is sort of exposed, or where the inside is exposed, I should say. I wanna make sure I get the glue kind of up underneath the bark to make sure that there's no actual space left when I'm done. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, it's not really that complicated. You're literally just painting all these sticks with white glue. Now here where the stick is broken on the top, I wanna to make sure also that I poke down into that crevice with this white glue because I wanna make sure that that crack, that very small crack that's in the top of that stick does not continue to crack in the future. And PVA glue is exactly the same thing as wood glue. Anyway. All right, so what I've gone ahead and done here off camera is I've finished the white glue on all of the sticks so that they're all nice and hard and ready to paint. And then I went ahead and just put PVA and sand on all of the bases. Uh, you guys don't really need to see me do that. I'm sure that's pretty common sense for most of you out there. And I've just got them on the shelf here drying. So as soon as that PVA is dry, I'm gonna hit them with a brown spray, spray paint and then we can start painting. Sweet, so we've got our tree spray painted brown, that's sweet. So what I've decided to use here is the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch. This is uh, rust paint. Uh, make sure if you're going to use spray paint that A, like I said, make sure the foam core is completely covered in glue and spackle because otherwise if any of this gets onto the foam part it will melt and it will make it look real nasty. But also with the spackle and glue on top, uh, it prevents this from warping once I paint it. So now we got a pretty good coat on there. This stuff's great, it's actually the two-time coverage, um, which covers amazingly, especially with sand. I find when you paint on sand, like with a brush, it soaks in too much and it leaves splotches and stuff. 
This stuff it almost never leaves swatches. Plus, because it's rust paint, it holds everything in just nicely. Now, make sure if you're gonna use spray paint also that you don't get a gloss finish because it'll be really hard for you to paint over a gloss finish. You wanna get a matte finish, or in this case, I'm actually using a satin finish. And the color I've used is, is espresso. So the next step I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some craft paint that I got at my local Dollarama. This color is specifically cinnamon brown, and I am going to paint these trees. I'm gonna paint on the cinnamon brown and just get a nice base coat on all of our trees. The next step, now that we've got our cinnamon brown on all the tree trunks, I'm gonna take my uh, craft paints here. I've got a black, just a standard black, and a hunter green. And basically all I've done is I've got these little bottles here that I got at the dollar store as well. Just little tiny uh, bottles, perfect for mixing. And what I've done is I've mixed about one third paint and two thirds water. And what this is gonna do is basically the same thing as a miniature wash. All I'm doing here is paint it on, same way you would a normal wash. So I'm gonna put the black all over the cinnamon brown. Put the black on all of them. I got my nice big brush here. Also, I got a Dollarama. Just soak them in black. And you'll notice it'll run off the trees a lot, especially because it is a dollar store paint and because we've watered it down so much it's just gonna run right off, but that's okay. Even if it gets all over the base, that's all right, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna touch up the brown after this before we start dry brushing everything. I just wanna get this on there so it creates a depth, it shows all the texture of the bark and all that stuff. There we go. And then even while that black is still wet, I don't have to wait for it to dry to put on the green. I am, however, gonna take most of the paint, most of this wash, I should say, out of my brush, just with a paper towel. Make sure to get most of it out of there. Again, I don't, I'm not really all that worried if there's a little bit still on the brush because I am, there's still quite a bit on these trees. And I am kind of mixing these. That'll create kind of a transition between the two washes and kind of blend them together. But what I want to use the green for is just sort of the lower quarter of the, of the trunk. All this does is sort of create the illusion of groundwater sort of building up on the trees, creating like a mildew or a moss. And I'm just going to cover the bottom here. Again, be kind of haphazard with it, put it on nice and thick. That looks excellent. Same thing here, just a little bit of along the bottom bit of the tree. Don't worry if you get too much, don't worry if it runs all over the piece, it's totally fine. Again, we're going to be touching these up before we start dry brushing them. So just for now, just want to get sort of the lower part. And there you go guys, we've got two colors on there. Sweet, so now that our washes are dry, we're going to take our uh, cinnamon brown that we painted the trees with originally, and we're just going to do a dry brush on these trees. Now that we've washed them, uh, they're a lot darker than I want them to be, and that was really just to add some like subtle colors to it to make it look like they've been weathered and to bring out some of the details. So I've just poured some of my cinnamon brown on my palette here. I've got my nice big tank brush, and as usual, just brushing it out on the paper towel so there's very little paint in the brush, and then we're just going to go over all the trees again, just with a light stroke, just like this. Not super complicated, super easy, and uh, we're going to go all the way down to the roots. Now, again, don't be worried if you get it all over the sand part, that's okay, because later we're going to touch up the brown, as I said in the last stage, um, and dry brush those parts. So, I'm just going to go over all of these, just like that, as you can see. I'll well, show you very well there. As you can see, just brought them back up. And we're just going to do that all over the trees, on all the pieces, and move on to the next stage. Alright, so now that we've brought the brown back up to that nice cinnamon color, as you can see, we're maintaining the dark details in all of the bark and the cracks and crevices and stuff like that. Now it's really starting to take shape. The thing is, on the base here though, I've got all that green wash as you can see, 
is collecting around the dirt. And as much as it would be okay to leave that, because we're going to put some extra dry brush layers on this, I don't actually want to. But also there's uh, some areas where like these rocks here have chipped off as I've been manhandling this and painting it. So we're going to fix those at the same time. So I've got here uh, the Rust-Oleum Satin Espresso, the exact same color, same manufacturer, everything that we used for the spray paint. Uh, just to ensure that it is exactly the same color. And I've mixed it all up here. I've got my uh, crappy brush that I like to use for glue and things like this. And touch up any areas where I've got dry brush onto the sand, where the wash has shown through, and any areas where the sand has kind of chipped off. And now I'm going to go around and do all that on all the pieces, and then we'll move on to the next dry brush stage. All right, our next dry brush step, now that our uh, touch-ups are all dry and everything, it's looking pretty sweet. Uh, we're gonna just dry brush the sand now with this uh, yellow oxide. If you guys saw the uh, table video I did at the beginning of this series, if you haven't, go back and check that out. I'll even put a link right there for you. Uh, otherwise, follow along with what I'm doing. We got the yellow oxide here. This is just to create a sort of in-between stage between the final dry brush and this really dark brown that we've got here. It'll match the rest of our table as well because this is the, the, the paint that we used on the rest of the table. So, very simply, once again, got my cool dollar store terrain brush. I like to use this brush for pretty much everything on these terrains. Got nice stiff bristles. It's nice and cheap. If I ruin it, then I can just throw it out afterwards. I got like a dozen of them for a buck, so no problem. Uh, take my yellow oxide, put it on my palette there. As usual, standard dry brush. Brush it out on the paper towel. Apologize for putting my arm in the way for you guys there. So let's do that. How's that? That's better, right? Brushing it out on the paper towel as usual. And just go around and paint the entire base with this yellow. Give it a nice heavy dry brush. Uh, don't go too heavy, but don't go too light either. We want to create a nice in-between shade because we are going to do a final dry brush on this entire terrain piece, uh, which is going to tie the trees together with the base. But right now we're just getting this yellow oxide on there, trying to get a nice shade. We don't want just two colors. We never do two colors. We do at least three, right guys? Always. One color is three colors. So we're going to keep going like that on the entire terrain piece. I'm going to do all the other ones as well, and we'll go on to the final stage. All right, final painting step, guys. Once we get this final uh, coat on here, we're going to be able to start putting on foliage and really making these things pop. So. Right now, I've got my galvanized metal, my trim clad. I just bought this giant thing here. Uh, as you guys saw in the last video, I painted the entire table with it and I have barely scratched the surface. I would always suggest buying large amounts of paint like this for terrain projects because they go a long, long way. The Liquitex Basics I just showed you, uh, the only reason I was using it is because I had it already. Um, this one I bought specifically for this terrain project and I guarantee you I will have it into the future. So, this is basically a bleached bone, uh, or Ushapti bone, or whatever, it's basically that color, it's an off-white, um, more or less a bone color, and this is going to, we are going to dry brush the entire terrain piece. So now we've got our washes on the trees, we got them dry brushed back up to that cinnamon brown, we've got the espresso and then the yellow oxide on the base. It's looking pretty sweet as you can see. Now this is the best brush I ever use for terrain. It is massive, it's got nice stiff bristles and I think it only cost me a couple of bucks at the art store and it has been invaluable. So as you can see how big it is, this is the one I always use for this stage because we're going to do the entire terrain piece, trees, base, everything is all going to get this bleach bone and what that's just going to do is it's going to create a nice highlight on everything. So I got to pop open my can here, just give me a second. Okay, now that I've got that, I've got a couple of different paper towels laid out here. Uh, usually I would take the paint and put it out on the palette and then dry brush it out on the things here. But since I am going to be using this quite a bit right now, I'm just going to go right out of the can because that's the way I like to roll. So I've got a couple different paper towels and the reason for that is because I'm just going to dip the very tips of my bristles into this can, brush it out on the first paper towel, 
Uh, sometimes, the reason I've got the second one is because sometimes when I brush it out on the first paper towel, I've got a little bit too much paint, and in fact I do in this case. This is where the second one comes in, just to get a little drier, because on this stage, we don't want to go too heavy. This is the final step, guys. So if I go too heavy, I can't reverse it, and I've screwed my whole paint job. So I just want to go real light dry brush. The great thing about dry brushing is that if you go too light, you can just do a little bit more. So, I am going to use this giant brush and I'm also going to go over all the trees and everything with it. Just to create that final, you can see there, nice bright highlight. Create that nice final highlight. I don't want to go too heavy, like I said. If you do go too heavy in spots, you can always fix it later with a little bit of washes, but I want to try and avoid that because I want these things to be pretty. I want my, my customer to be happy with this. In fact, I am still going a little too heavy with it. Don't want to kill it. If you, guard, if you do put it on and you notice it's going a little too heavy, just brush it out more on your paper towel and it should be fine. As you can see here, it brings out all the texture of that bark quite nicely. It adds a nice final highlight to my sand, making it look almost gray as opposed to brown, which is exactly what I want. So that's it as far as painting, guys. The next step, we're going to start adding some foliage. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pin drill, my good trusty pin drill, and I'm going to go around this piece and I'm going to decide where I want my plastic plants to go. The first thing I'm going to add is the plastic plants. So I, in order to cement them in so that they won't come off later, I want to drill little holes to sort of stick them into. And then I'll show you in the next step how we're going to actually attach them. But this basically just ensures that they are sunk into the terrain and not just like sitting on top. And that's going to create a lot of sturdiness. So I'm going to start by taking my pin drill and just going around and arbitrarily sort of finding spots where I want to put the plastic plants and then drilling holes where I want them to go. It's not rocket science, but at the same time, uh, a good tip I could give you, like I do the same tip I gave you with the trees, things tend to go in threes. So I want to basically draw a bunch of, or draw, drill a bunch of little triangles randomly around here, so like three spots in the same sort of general area and something you can do here is any area like right here I don't know if you can really see one of the rocks chipped off of course I'm gonna put a hole right there because I don't want that to be seen but at the same time you can use it to sort of cover areas where you think you put your dry brush too heavy or they're not really painted the way you want them you, you want that spot to look so we can kind of use the foliage to hide a lot of that and that will prevent us from having to repaint any areas and it'll also dress the piece up at the same time. Uh, I also want to make sure I got areas here like around the bottom of the tree where it's just a little too dark. I want to probably put some trees or some plants there. One, because I find that in nature the little plants tend to grow around the roots of trees. I'm not sure why that is, but it's just kind of the way it is. But also, like I say, I used a very large brush to dry brush on this uh, bleached bone color. So this way, any areas where that large brush didn't really get, like at the base of this tree, I'm going to kind of cover those up to hide the inconsistencies in the piece but at the same time making it look more realistic because like I say the plants tend to grow where the roots of the trees meet the soil probably has something to do with the amount of sunlight or shade or something along those lines as far as nature is concerned so we're trying to go for as realistic as possible but at the same time it doesn't have to be 100% realistic I mean really this is a, a science fiction uh, setting so that's it, I'm just going around, making a bunch of little marks of Nurgle everywhere, three dot patterns all the way around the piece, wherever I think the uh, plants should go, and then we're gonna start gluing in our plants. All right, so now it's time to start throwing on our foliage. Now as you can see here, I've got a variety of different plastic plants. Now I put them in these bins, they actually, some came in vines, some came in like topiary balls and stuff like that, and I basically just went around and clipped them into small handleable uh, pieces. Uh, 
So I'm just gonna, this basically just creates variety. Like I said, we put the holes in threes. I'm gonna put three different plants in each spot, just cause, you know, it's not always the same type of plant that's growing in one spot. Different plants grow together, complement each other and stuff like that. If I want, in certain areas, I may wanna put, you know, two or three of the same plant in the same spot. But for the most part, this gives me uh, an, a variety of different plants to use. Uh, so, I've got here my 5 minute epoxy. This stuff is great because you can literally glue anything to anything with it, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and this one in particular comes in a double syringe like this, so there is a epoxy and then there's a hardener. Um, this one I like because it ensures that you get the same amount of each. Sometimes you'll buy 5 minute epoxy, it'll come in two separate bottles. That's fine, you just pour a dab, pour a dab, mix them together. So that's basically what I'm doing here. I got my palette, I'm gonna pour, whoa, whoa, this was a little clogged. I'm gonna pour myself out a nice dab of it onto my palette here. And then I've just got a piece of sprue here that I don't mind throwing out afterwards. And I'm just gonna use it to stir this around, mix it up all nice and good. Now, the reason it's called 5 minute epoxy is because this stuff literally dries in 5 minutes. So you don't want to mix too much at once, because it'll dry up before you're done using it. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to go here, I'm going to grab my plant that I want to use, just arbitrarily grabbing one, and I'm just going to dip the tip into the glue, get a nice big glob on there, find my holes, and just stick it right in the hole. That's all there is to it. I'm going to go on to the next one, I kind of like these ones here. Now, when you get into situations like this, like I said, I cut them down, but that's obviously way too tall. So I'm going to take my clippers and cut some smaller pieces off, so like that piece right there. Put a nice big dab on there, and shove that one into the next hole. There you go. I'll add a third one, and again, just for variety's sake, I'll take some of this one. Looks pretty cool. Nice big dollop on the there. And put it in the third hole. And that's that, guys. So the final step before we move on to the canopy is going to be the clump foliage. Uh, I just wanted to add some clump foliage to this because I didn't want just plastic trees. I mean, it's kind of boring if you only have one type of foliage. I like to have at least two, sometimes even three types of foliage on a terrain piece. It just makes it a little more interesting, adds some variance to the piece, and clump foliage is probably one of the easiest applications, even easier than these uh, plastic trees. So all I'm going to do, I mean, it's not rocket surgery, I've got some white glue, Pour some white glue on my palette here. Farts. Alright. See, that bottle's getting near the end, so that's fine. We don't need a whole lot to do this. Uh, I'm gonna grab my glue brush, the brush that I like to use for things like static grass and clump foliage and things like this. This brush has been overly used. I like to use this one for the glue. Try to use a brush that you don't really like all that much or that's been overused because white glue tends to destroy the bristles. Don't use your good brushes, guys. And then I'm going to go around here and just look for any areas where, like, my dry brush is too heavy, where there might be a lack of a dry brush, or areas that are kind of not as pretty as I'd like them to be. Also, maybe concentrate around the bases of the trees, like right here. I'm going to put a nice dollop right there, and then I'm actually going to take my clump, that I want to use, and just dip it in the glue as well. And what this will ensure is that there's lots of glue on there, and then I'm just going to put it in place. Push it down real good with your finger, make sure to give it lots of pressure, see I'm pushing it in with my thumb, and that way, because you'll find that the clump foliage will really soak in the glue, and this way I want to make sure that it sticks and it doesn't come off too much in the future. As you can see, it's already starting to come off a little bit. That's because the glue is still wet. Once it dries, it won't be doing that. And there we go. And then what we're actually gonna do after is we're gonna spray these a little bit before I go on to putting the trees, just to ensure that they don't come off. So I've got a little bit of clump right there, as you can see. Boom, little tiny bush. 
Sweet, so the final step to the clump foliage. I have noticed in the past that when I've used clump foliage and I just glued it on with the PVA the way I just did, uh, it tends to flake off later because only parts of it um, stick to the glue and other parts don't. And then, much like any other sponge or anything like that, you can pull it apart, right, into pieces. So only the parts that stuck will end up getting held down. And we want to ensure the durability of this piece because yes, there's going to be miniatures placed on it, it's going to be kicked around once it's not in use, you know, put on a shelf or in a box or what have you. So I just have here a spray bottle I got at the dollar store. Now I've filled this with PVA glue and rubbing alcohol. Now most people use water in PVA glue, I prefer the rubbing alcohol because it has much less surface tension than water and ensures that it gets into all the cracks and crevices. It's actually better for spraying things like sand and stuff like that, or in this case, um, it will soak in a lot better than water into the foam, and then of course the alcohol evaporates quicker than water, so that will also ensure that the PVA glue uh, remains behind and holds it in place. Now, this spray bottle specifically has a very exact spray, like a stream, I don't want the wide spray, because in this case I don't want to get it all over the piece, I just want to get it on the areas where the clump foliage is. So like this spot right here, I'll show you guys up close, so you can get a better sh there you go, that's a little better, right? This spot right here I'm going to hit with it, I'm just going to do that, and spray a nice helping on there. Now as you see I got a little bit all over the terrain piece, like I said, I don't really want it anywhere else, so I'm just going to take a paper towel and go around and just sop up the areas where I don't really want the glue to be, I just kind of want it on the clump foliage. And right now it's super wet, but that's okay, because it will dry and it will ensure that that clump foliage stays where I want it. Same thing here, nice dollop on there, this guy here, and this guy right here. Perfect. And then just go around with my paper towel, sop up the extra around the piece. I don't want to completely cover this guy, I just want to get it where I want it, right? And that's all there is to it, guys. Sweet, so the final step in this project is to get the canopy done. This is going to complete the piece and get us some cool looking jungle trees. So I have here some fake leaves that I cut off of a, a dollar star plant, again. Uh, these came in a full plant, and then I just took my clippers, just like I do with the ground foliage, and cut them all off. But as you can see, they're shiny. I don't know if you can really see from that, but they're kind of translucent, which I don't like. And they don't really look real. They look fake. They look like plastic or fabric or whatever the hell they're made of. So, I've got here just a piece of rubber foam that I use for stuff like this, and all I've done along here is poke a bunch of little holes. So that way I can put plants and foliage and stuff here so that I can spray paint them. All right, so we're out here in the backyard. We're gonna do a little bit of spray painting. So the two colors I'm gonna be using, I've got here Trem Clad Rust Paint. This is a matte finish, again with the matte finish, guys, because I wanna be able to uh, make these not so shiny. I mean, right now they're shiny plastic and I don't like that. So I'm gonna start by painting them this dark green so that they kind of blend in with the rest of the table or rest of the foliage I should say and then I've also got this camouflage rust-oleum and what that's gonna do is we're just gonna give that a light dusting and it'll sort of create a shading and just a natural shading very easily So the problem with doing this outside though is that I'm a slave to the wind so we're gonna start by using this dark green I've got all my leaves here and I want to pay attention to which direction the winds going I don't want to just go whoosh, like real heavy with it at, at first because not only is it going to go on too thick, but it's all, it might actually knock my leaves out of my nice uh, holder that I have here. So I'm just going to do kind of light shots at it. And I might have to do a couple of coats of this. In fact, I probably am going to do a couple of coats of this. The good news is, this spray paint dries very quickly, especially when hitting sort of a fabric type thing like this. It'll soak in, and it'll dry. Oh, see? I knocked one off. So, just keep going. Again, keep a distance so that you don't do what I just did. And just give them a light spray, just like that. 
I'm going to do this side, then I'm going to do the other side with it, and then uh, I'll show you the uh, camel. All right, now here we are just a few minutes later. Our dark green has pretty much dried. It only took about five minutes, which is excellent. That's why I love the spray paint. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of create a minor highlight, uh, just a nice transitional effect sort of across the whole thing. And again, this is where you really got to pay attention to which direction the wind's blowing. So right now the wind's blowing this direction, which is perfect for me. I'm going to hold the can at a good distance from the trees because you don't want to cover it with this camo. We just want to get a nice light sprinkling. So I'm just going to go very light like this, across the whole thing, just to sprinkle it on top and create a little more depth to them. And that's it. Sweet, so we're back in the studio and as you can see here I've got all my spray painted leaves all laid out on the table here. Now, this is what they originally looked like. And this is what they now look like. As you can see, much better. But they don't really say wow to me. I mean, they do look a lot better and they look a lot less uh, silly and phony, but they don't really pop. So here, I've got some leaf green craft paint. Basically, all I'm gonna do here is just bring up another color. So, like I say, everything should have I mean, it's a good idea, for visually speaking, that everything should have three colors. So we've done two, we've done the dark green, we've done a camel green sort of shade, I suppose is the best way to put it, and now we're going to do a leaf green highlight. And all I'm going to do here, I've got a little bit on my palette already, and I'm just going to take a brush, and I'm just going to go around and stab the edges all the way around the leaf. Working outwards, so I'm going to work out like this from the edge of the leaf, and I just want to go around the edges. Don't worry if it goes on a little bit thick, because because of the cloth-like nature of these leaves that I started with, it really soaks in well, and actually creates a pretty good transition. So, that's all I'm doing, guys. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you here, just so you can see a little better. And, like I said, just going around the outside, sort of stabbing it, but like working from the inside out. All the way around the outside of the leaf. And this is just going to add another layer of detail, make them look a little more tropical. And because the ground foliage I used has both a dark green, a medium green, and a light green in it, this will actually make it sort of blend in more with the plastic ground foliage that we used. Okay, so now we've got all the edges of our leaves painted. I'm actually not entirely happy with this because as you can see, the lines are very, very stand out. They stand out a lot. They're not as, uh, transition is not as nice as I'd like. So what I'm gonna have to do now at this point, now that I've uh, seen that this is not really getting me the results I want, I'm gonna take my terrain washes, the same dollar store paints and water that I used in the past scenes of this video, and I'm going to wash the entire leaf with just some black. Again, one third black, two thirds water. Shake her up real good. And then I'm gonna give these guys a real thick coat of this stuff. Again, because it's mostly water, it's actually gonna run off the leaf a lot. So don't worry if you get it on real thick, like you see there, I'm putting it on real thick, it's already starting to run off. So that's it. I'm just going to go around, I'm going to soak these guys. If this green outline is a little too drastic still after this wash, I'm going to do a second layer, and I bet that'll probably be enough. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on all of the leaves that I've highlighted and hopefully that'll bring them back down, transition those colors out a little better, and we'll see what they look like when I'm done. Just to interject with a quick pro tip, as you're washing these, you're gonna find that the wash is gonna flow off very easily. And in fact, it'll start to pool near the edges of the leaves. So if you're gonna do this kind of technique, as they dry, make sure you keep an eye on them. And anywhere you see some pooling, just kind of hit it with a dry brush, so here, you know, I've got all my paint out of my brush and I'm just basically finding the little pools and doing my best to 
try and spread them out around the leaf. It'll especially go, it'll especially pull on the tips of each little, you know, each little branch here, each little uh, rustle or whatever you want to call them, as well as on the very edges. Sweet, so we finally got the leaves to where I'm comfortable with them. I think I like them like that. So now we're going to go ahead and put them actually onto our tree trunks. So the first step, I'm going to take my pin drill, much like I did with the plastic plants. I'm going to drill holes in these trunks and then attach them with my uh, five minute epoxy. To start, I'm just gonna arbitrarily go around and find spots where I want to glue the leaves on. So I want to the top here, obviously, on this guy. Drill a hole right there. If you can kind of ream it out a bit, because the stems on these are a little bit bigger than the drill bit that I'm using. But that's okay. I'll make it work. Maybe a little bit deeper than that. I don't want to go through the other side though. There we go. Uh, I'm going to throw one on the end of each one of these branches. Just drill a hole straight down the center. I like a plastic bag tangled so in your well. tree branch. I'll put more this part of the branch rather than the very, very tip, just to give it more of an upward angle. I don't want these leaves to sag down, I want them to kind of droop a little bit, like point up and then droop down a little bit. This looks better. So it nice to be able to move models underneath this. And then, I think I want one more here. Uh, maybe I'll just put it down in this crack right here, just to seal that shut and get another one going that way. So just like before, we're going to pour out our double syringe here. A nice clean spot on the palette. I don't want to pour out too much because like I said, this stuff dries very, very quickly. And I've got a piece of screw, just like before. I don't mind chucking afterwards. Steer it up real good. Just like the rubber plants, I'm going to dip the stem, get a nice big dollop on there. Oh, you guys can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Nice big dollop on the tip there. And I think this one's going to go right here. Like I said, my stem is just a little bit bigger than the hole. Course, but there you go. There's the first one. Looking pretty sweet. On to the next. Right here. Now, if you find guys that they start to droop because you haven't made your hole deep enough or you can't get the stem in deep enough, it's right there because of the hole, they're staying in place. But if you find that they start to droop down or whatever, you can just use something to kind of stand them up because this is five minute epoxy, it does dry very quickly. But you're not going to stand here for five minutes and hold a leaf on like it's just it's just painful. So rather than that, you can just like you know put a bottle of crazy glue underneath, to kind of hold it up, or a bottle of paint or something like that, just to kind of prop it up until it dries. Just make sure that you do get at least some kind of hole on there, or else these things just won't stay. Okay, cool. And one more for this tree. Shove it right down in there with my plan. Nice. There you go, guys. There's one tree. So I'm going to go around and do all the rest of this table, and uh, I'll show you guys when it's done. So I hope you all enjoyed that little tutorial. I think that was a lot of fun. Uh, basically, this is going to be a series, guys. So last week you saw the building of the table video. Today I showed you guys how to build the trees for said table. Next week I'm going to show you guys how I build the river. And then after that we're going to do bunker and sandbags, which is going to be a lot of fun. Um, so that's four weeks of straight videos. And then a fifth one, I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to build a swamp piece for this table. However, the fifth one is going to be for patrons only. So if you like this series and you want to see how it ends, 
friends, go to the, go to the description below, find the Patreon link, it's right there. Um, and basically, go on there for a dollar of, of, for one of these videos. All of these Tuesday and Thursday videos are released. Basically, you pay one dollar for each one of those. And that gets you not only when we do series like this, it gets you the final video. We're going to keep doing series like this. So if you want to see the final video of this, the final video of our campaign series is, series is, is, is. <laughs> then jump on the Patreon and you'll be able to see those videos not only when nobody else can, but also earlier than anyone else. You'll get to see these videos as well earlier than everyone else. We release videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you guys will get them on Sundays. And all it takes is a buck, a buck a video. And that's it. It's barely anything at all, and it goes a long way to help what we do here at Encounter Wargaming. That aside, please go down to the bottom there, right below this video screen, hit subscribe, um, hit that little notification button so you will be notified when our videos come out. We release them every Tuesday and Thursday, and for the next few Tuesdays you'll get to see me continue building this table. So I hope to see you back next Tuesday for the River Terrain video. Until our next encounter. Like a monkey in a rocket on his way back home. Okay.